Ten years ago, I became a member of North American Fishing Club. I'm always getting online, looking for information, watching the videos. Then I saw through the TV show and online the ad for the for the contest to fish with the hosts of the show, uh, Eric Hadia and Tyler Capella. I was like, well, that sounds pretty cool, but you know, nobody ever wins these things. Well, that was awesome. Yeah, you got two of them. North American Fishing Club decided to have this contest with myself and Tyler Capella. I'm Captain Tyler Capella. If you actually want to catch some trophy fish, you got to come down to sunny Florida and fish with me. Saltwater fishing, to me, is the single most fun fishing I've ever had a chance to do. He made a great cast, and his first trout of his life was a, a gator trout. Hey, I'm used to catching brown trout in Wisconsin. Now I'm out here in the ocean <laughs> catching some sea trout, right? This guy right here, that's a oh, big, yeah. row laden female. That's a gator trout right there. Uh, all right. That's what you call them. When they're over 20 inches, that's, that's gator status. And I was really shocked when I got the call and Joel said, hey, I want to come up and fish with you. I said, with me? You don't want to go to Florida and fish? You know, that's a trip of a lifetime. I'm sure everybody thinks I'm insane for not going to Florida. So it was really humbling for me that this guy wanted to come and fish with me in Wisconsin. But I, I saw this as an opportunity to learn more about the kind of fishing that I do all the time. Eric, how you doing? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. We're gonna fish Lake Delavan here. I fish this lake quite a bit. It's a really popular lake. There's a lot of multi-species you know, species fishing here. I'll show you some of the stuff I do. Hopefully you can take it with you and maybe be a better fisherman. I can maybe even learn something from you. Well, we'll see about that. Let's go get them. All right, all right. For this summer deep thermal climb bite, there's a couple of techniques that work really good for me. One of them is deep cranking. It took me a long time to kind of to master it, or and I'm still not a master, but to figure out that deep crank bait bite. Right. You know, and you said you've got kids, so the other thing I want to show you is the live bait bite. It's a real simple thing to do. Hook up a sucker, drop it down on a circle hook rig, and catch them, catch them that way. All right, we're in 18 feet here. Okay. He's on. All right, just keep reeling. All righty. Like that. We got a bass, a pike, a walleye. You never know what you're gonna catch on those live bait. A little pike. A little pike. Real fast, faster. Yep. Joel's gonna have his hands full here, I think. That's a little, might be a little bit bigger. That's what I'm talking about. Nice bass. Oh no, that's a nice bass. All right. See how you get the multi-species? Spe nice I haven't bass. even had a chance to start casting yet. That's an average bass here in southern Wisconsin out of this nice lake. One. Yeah. Nice, fat, healthy fish. According to Eric, the bite was kind of tough. We were grinding it out and moving from place to place. We were catching some small pike. We were using the live bait, catching some pike and some large mouth. Feels like a nice bass. What I did is I threw the anchor down in the front of the boat just to kind of keep us here. Yeah, not bad, not bad. You know what, I'll just grab him, Joel. He's not, yeah, he's not that big. But that's probably one of the most important things I can overemphasize. I'm taking that crankbait and I'm just ripping it through the weeds and ripping it. And a lot of times on that pause, don't you feel that bite. So you rip, pull, rip, pull. If the fish aren't on the deep weeds, they're usually in the weeds. So first one on the board at the crank. Look at that bass right there. There he is. Funny, isn't it? Yeah. We work through this area with crankbaits and nothing going. You drop a minnow down and boom. I didn't even start drifting. Nope. There you go. You get one right away. Nice. Not a bad one though. We'll get them back. Half of the day or three quarters of the day, we struggled. We caught a couple of fish here and there and I was going from spot to spot to spot and I was getting frustrated as a fisherman. I could tell Eric was a little frustrated because he didn't feel like Lake Delavan had really showed what it can do or what it can produce. Oh yeah. The old Fedwick crankbait rod on the live bait. That's a nice rod, isn't it? It's got a nice dip. Swing them right over here. Yeah, you got them hooked perfectly. See that? It's a nice fish, too. You just hook them right in the corner of the mouth like that with that sucker. Nice. And catch lots of lots of bass on live bait. So here you go, buddy. Nice job. All right, thank you. Way to go. You yeah, keep on catching them. That's it's a, a solid good, fish. It's a solid fish, yeah. 
I can't tell you how many fish right. we caught, but we still weren't on that hot bite that Eric knew we could get on. And I was thinking, back home in Indiana, this would have been a great day fishing. There he is. All right. Is it the right species? I don't know. That's a bass. All right. Had to pull him out of the grass. That's where they're buried, up in that grass right now with this cold front. We're trying to film a TV show, and we were grinding, fishing deep, oh, fishing shallow, right. fishing in the weeds, fishing in the docks, you know, trying to get all these fish fired up. But we stuck it out, and I found a school of fish. Nice, oh, that's dude. a big smallie. Nice job. Oh, that's the biggest smallie I've ever caught. Well, that's great. 18 inch or at least. Yeah, he's good looking fish, man. There he is. Good one? He's fighting. Yeah, that's a good one. Starting to get that ripping it, that through, the ripping it through the weed thing. There he is. All right. Well, we got this cold front coming through. We caught a few bass today. Why don't we uh, see if we can put a few more in a boat tomorrow, man? Sounds like a plan. There you nice. go. I'm going to let you let them go. It's your fish. Nice. Nothing big, but you know, still had a good time. Oh, yeah. North American Fisherman is brought to you by Peak Antifreeze, right for your car and your wallet. Peak, run true. By Trilene, Angler's Trust Berkeley Trilene. By Bass Pro Shops, your adventure starts here. And by Abu Garcia, for life. Hey, I'm out here on Lake Delavan with contest winner Joel Brecher. And we're here in southern Wisconsin trying to catch some big fish. Day one, a little tough. We'll see what day two brings us. Well, we caught a few fish, a lot of pike yesterday, and some decent bass. You caught that nice smallie. And we got a cold front that came through today, so it's gonna be about 15 degrees colder today. I don't know, maybe a little windier or the same. We'll, you know, I'll have you maybe throw whatever you want, a spinner bait or something. We're gonna go fish in the weeds right away to see if the fish are up in the weeds like, right. like they were yesterday. So how's that sound? Sounds great. All let's, right, buddy. Let's hit them. See what the oh. fishies wanna bite. That's the fun part about it is trying to figure out what they wanna eat. I got a bite. Yeah! Right where they should be. I like it. Good job back there, partner. Swam it. Brought it right by the corner of that dock and, and clobbered it. Fish. Yep. There he is. Next cast. There he is. Yeah, that's a nice one. Not bad. Oh. Whoa! That's all right. He did us a favor. Two casts in a row. Two fish on the crankbait ripping through the weeds. Day two started out pretty good. Um, I thought we were going to be on to something. I fish this lake for about 15 years I've been guiding out here. And you know, usually you have these fish pretty dialed in. I haven't been out here for a month, but the fishing was kind of tough. I think uh, Eric might've caught a couple on a crankbait and man, and it just died. And it got windy. Uh, you could tell the front had moved through. The skies cleared up. It was bright blue skies and the fishing just got tough. You know, when you get these conditions, these cold fronts that come through and these bass kind of bury down in the weeds, you know, that's when we started fishing shallow. We started flipping docks. We started flipping up in the weeds, being very meticulous. And we really just weren't catching a lot of fish. I didn't know if it was the time of day or if the fish had just shut down. Sometimes it's just tough to catch these fish. Good one. So look at this. Oh, they're nice bass. That's what we're, that's a little better spe specimen here of what I'm used to catching here. It's a nice fish. About time. There he is. Another one down deep. How big is it? Doesn't feel as good. Oh, not bad though. All right. Flip them right in the boat here. Well, we're on to a few fish. Like I said, you know, pay attention to your electronics. And that's what we're getting. Tough bite today, but we're finally starting to scratch off a few decent fish. We fish just wanted underneath it. I got him. Yeah! That's a good one. Yeah, partner! There he is. That's what I'm talking about. That crank. I knew you'd get him on that crank, man. That's a good one. 
look at the other one right with it. You got two of I them. I got two. You got two. I got you two. You got two of them. Hit the net. I got oh, the crap. net. I'm getting them back down in the water. Oh, you got a smallie and a large. The other one just came right up and hit it, dude. That was so cool. That was awesome. I was like, well, that's pretty cool when you get the school going, you know, another fish follows it. And right as that fish was just about where you could see it under the water, it was a smallmouth bass and it just plastered that crankbait and both fish hooked up right there. And uh, I caught two fish on a crankbait at one time. Never done that before. I gotta be honest with you, I've only seen it on TV. All right, man, that's two for the price of one right there, buddy. That nice was big awesome. smallie, nice largey. That was the craziest thing. You know what, he had this large mouth on and as soon as I said, oh look, there's another one right on it. And that small mouth smashed it right on the surface. There Actually pulled your split ring out of the, the other hook. Yeah. Nice job, man. You never caught two before. No, a never caught two that on a crankbait cool. before. That was awesome. And that shows you they're schooled up out here. Oh, yeah. You know, so we'll get back on them. And nice job. Largies and smallies hanging together. That's, yeah, isn't that that's special? crazy. In this particular lake, if you use your electronics, you can see the fish. They're there. They can't hide from you, especially in the dirtier water. You'll see them. It's real clear. I didn't see any fish out deep. So what did that tell me? Most of the fish have to be right on the weed edge or right in the weeds. So we started fishing in the weeds. There he is. Another one. My favorite way to catch them right here is on a crankbait. Whoa. That's a fun way to catch lots of fish. That's fish. That's fish. I'm at him for you real quick. Put him in the old frable here. Here he comes. Bring him around. All right, buddy. Nice. That's another nice one. There we go. Load it up. And fish on. That's simple. Ooh, taking a little drag out. That's a good one. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's a big one. Yeah, we'll take them. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, buddy, that's all day five pounder right there. We caught them real good at first on the artificials and we're just getting ready to leave. And look at that, man, that is a toad right there. Fat, southern Wisconsin, Lake Delavan. What an awesome trip, Joel. Thanks a lot for coming out here, man. Hey, you bet, it was awesome. It was great fishing with you. We caught some fantastic fish like this today. I'm gonna get this big girl back. Hey, until next week, you can watch North American Fishermen. We're always chasing the big fish. Coming up, what's lurking beneath the surface that threatens to destroy the water you fish? Find out on Silent Invaders, up next. Hey, I just want to take a quick second and talk about the gear that I use today. Now, I was spooled up with 12 pound fluorocarbon on the new Revo MGX, and this is a super sweet, unbelievably light reel, and I had 100% 12 pound test fluorocarbon on a Fenwick Atos rod here, medium power, and then I was just using a football head jig here with the new beach head. That was working good out deep, and then we were using the same rod and throwing crankbaits and ripping them through the weeds. So pretty simple tackle for catching a lot of big fish. Got him. All right. Good job, buddy. Joel told me he wanted to learn some new and different techniques that he could teach his boys, that he could go out with his friends and utilize. He wanted to check out some of the latest and greatest electronics. I kind of went around the lake, showed him how I read the maps, find the points, find the inside turns, use my side imaging. You know, all in all, we had a fantastic fishing trip. As long as he had fun, I was happy. It was a great trip. I want to thank everybody at North American Fishing Club. I want to thank Eric. We had a great time. We spent I think twice as much time on the water fishing as I thought we would. It was an awesome trip and I had a great time. On a recent summer morning, research biologist Ed Rutherford was out on Lake Michigan dragging the bottom for samples of zebra and quagga mussels, but he also pulled up a lesser known invasive species, 
it seems we ha we caught a tremendous number of these um, large predaceous cladocerans called Bithotrephes, the spiny water flea. The spiny water flea is so tiny it can barely be seen at the tip of a finger. Yet it presents a serious risk to North America's aquatic ecosystem. This is Island Lake Reservoir near Duluth, Minnesota. It's infested with spiny water flea. The reported densities here, which reach around 100 per cubic meter of water, are among the highest densities in a single lake reported thus far uh, on the North American continent. Biologist Don Brandstrader lowers a plankton net 90 feet to capture samples of the invasive to study in his lab. And they go down to the very deeper parts of the lake during the daytime and only rise up into the water column and near the surface during the night. This microscopic insect actually competes with small fish by gobbling up zooplankton, the fish's main food supply. But when the small fish, in turn, attempt to eat the tiny insect, they begin to choke and cough back up that organism. That's because of the flea's long barbed tail, which not only chokes small fish, it clogs up fishing lines Water fleas, they collect on our lines when we're trolling on, on the downriggers. And sometimes we have to stop the customers from reeling in the fish because the line won't go through the guides because there's so many water fleas jammed up on the line. Like so many other invasives, the spiny water flea hitchhiked its way from northern Europe in the ballast water of ships. It first appeared in the lower Great Lakes in the early 1980s. By 1987, it was established in all of the Great Lakes. The spiny water flea is just one of hundreds of aquatic invasives, just waiting to secretly hitch a ride with unsuspecting boaters and anglers to even more lakes and rivers. So drying does appear to be the only effective means of killing the organism and its resting egg at this point. The diligence of boaters is the best defense we have in the ever-growing battle with the aquatic hitchhikers, known as the silent invaders. North American Fisherman is brought to you by Ranger Boats, still building legends one at a time. Quebec, providing emotions since 1534. Berkeley Gulf, alive. Looks alive, feels alive, tastes alive. And by the North American Fishing Club. Captain Jason Stock, and down here in sunny Florida. It's February, and uh, this is the time of year we target our big trout. You know, our trout, what we consider a gator trout, is anywhere from 20 to 30 inches. And uh, we're throwing the Sabeel stick shad, working it right up against the shorelines generally, and chasing, you know, trying to mimic them chasing the bait fish. And a twitch, twitch, pause pattern seems to work the best. Also, while we're targeting the, the big trout, we're catching the big redfish as well. So the water is real clear in the winter time, so you got that great opportunity for sight fishing, actually seeing the fish take your lure, which is visually exciting. So uh, come on down to Florida. Welcome to Knot Wars, where we pit two fishing knots head to head in a competition of strength. Now we're in the midst of a great line to line battle. And this year on Knot Wars, it's personal. Because not only are we pitting the fishing knots against one another in competition, we're also setting up battles between the anglers who selected those knots. Now we've asked the staff and hosts at North American Fishermen to tell us some of the line to line knots that they really like using. And this year, as always, we're using Berkeley line for all of our knots. We're using a 14 pound Trilene XT, a 15 pound Trilene 100% fluorocarbon, and a 14 pound fire line. Let's get started. This week's challenge sees Kurt Beckstrom's leader knot coming back to face its challenger, the knot I selected, the wolf knot. So let's get started on this great line to line challenge by showing you how to tie each of these knots. First, the leader. Run the two tag ends parallel. Now bring your main line back toward the middle, and this is the tricky part, wrap it around the doubled lines three times. Then insert the tag end through the middle of the loops and tighten the knot just enough that it doesn't slip. Now repeat the process using the tag end of the leader material. Moisten before drawing both knots together and tightening. So there it is, the leader knot. Now let's show you how to tie the wolf knot. Start with both lines parallel. 
The first step is to take the tag end of the line number one and wrap it over line number two to form a half hitch. But instead of running the tag end through the half hitch just once, run it through twice and draw the knot sort of tight. Now repeat the same step on line number two, but go under line number one before forming the half hitch. Again, go through twice. The final step, moisten and draw tight. And there's the wolf knot. We're ready for this competition to begin. Here we are at the Berkeley Knot Wars machine, and we're all set up. The knot I've selected, the wolf knot, and Kurt's knot, the leader knot. Let's see which one goes on the next week. Oh, my knot lost. The wolf knot off into the distance. Leader knot holding strong. So it's moving on to next week. And it's going to meet the uni to uni knot. And one of our hosts, Tyler Capella, selected that knot. So I'm excited to see which one of these two will be moving on again. Now, if you want to learn anything about the knots that we tie here on Knot Wars, just head on over to our website, or better yet, download the Knot Wars app on your smartphone. Knot Wars, because no good fish story ends with a broken knot. The following products have been field tested and approved by members of the North American Fishing Club. The Fluger Supreme Baitcast Reel takes it to the next level in design perfection. It gives you the most bang for your buck, features top of the line performance, and also has innovative features. The Lake Master Digital GPS Map Card offers revolutionary charts to enhance your fishing in 22 states and northwest Ontario. The chip is easy to use and even easier to set up. To find out how you can become a field tester or have your products tested, visit fishingclub.com.